Well, next we've got uh, Fatou Sal, um, who is the director of Women Living Under Muslim Laws. Uh, she's a Senegalese sociologist, a member of a number of African and international associations, including a founder member of Le Groupe de Recherche sur les Femmes et la Loi au Senegal. She's an international director of Women Living Under Muslim Laws, a solidarity network that provides information support and a collective space for women whose lives are shaped, conditioned, or governed by laws and customs said to derive from Islam. Okay, Fatou. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I think I owe you an apology. I usually speak fast in French, but I control French. I am a francophone. And it's worse in English because my words are running after my ideas. I'm trying to put them together, so once in a while it's a bit difficult. So these are only apologies uh, I owe you. Uh, and as it is difficult to just to, in 10 minutes, <laughs> read or speak about my presentation, I hope it will be published one day. I will just take key points. First of all, um, I'm glad to be here because this is a non-academic conference. For 40 years in my life, I have been an academic, teaching at universities and being in, uh, in conferences where you are required scientific objectivity meaning you have to be polite when you agitate uh, ideas. For instance, um, when I write on uh, women and whatever it is, it is very difficult to have a feminist approach because on my campus in Senegal, to be uh, feminist means to be Western, which is a sort of blackmail because you want to be African and want to be feminist and want to say the rights of women. And it is even worse today on my campus in Dakar, where it is very difficult also to be, to claim yourself as a secular, while Senegal is a secular state, uh, because we, we, we were granted secularism, and I talk about it in two minutes, but there was no challenge of discussing about secularism. But today it's very difficult to say you are secular, because if you are secular, it means you don't believe in God, which is, I don't care, that's fine with me, but it's very difficult with students, and uh, so this is the context of, um, of, uh, of challenge. I have been in, in Paris for 10 years at the University of Paris Diderot, where it was easy for me to be a feminist, but it was also difficult to be, a, to be not difficult to be secular, but, but both uh, combinations were quite difficult because me, as an African woman, I was subject of topic, of ethnology, anthropology, cultural anthropology. And what I suffered the most was to be uh, part of cultural relativism. So there was many challenges in doing uh, work on women, on women in region, women in the state, uh, and on uh, secularism. So this is that's why I feel, uh, I feel um, very happy to be here and to be able to, uh, to talk really what I have in my, should I say, guts. So as a citizen of uh, independent secular state, I must say that I inherited as many Senegalese and many West African people coming from uh, former French colonies of laicity. I'm going to speak about laicity because this is a word I understand. Secularism is too complicated, and I don't want to be complicated translating from English to French when I'm translating from uh, Wolof to French or French to Wolof, which is my native uh, language. But what we had in France, uh, what we entered from France was uh, laicity, but a re rearranged laicity. Uh, what I say, a laissé reprogrammé. It means that the French who preach for the separation between religion and the state, with all the complications that Miami and Nadia talked about, uh, talked about uh, uh, earlier. When you come in countries, and West Africa, I'm speaking of West Africa, Senegal and Mali, countries which were Muslim since the 11th century, going 
in uh, several uh, decade, uh, centuries to, uh, to uh, construct uh, Islam in their societies. I think it was very difficult for the French to bring secularism in uh, countries who, when they became uh, colonized by the French, use Islam as an identity. Because otherwise, your tribal culture, your ethnic culture, uh, your ethnicity for the French were not valued. But Islam was something that the French could understand and could, uh, entre guillemets, uh, respect. So people use the Islamic, this, that, uh, their Muslim identity as a tool of resistance, political resistance, cultural resistance, and religious uh, uh, resistance. So it meant that when the French uh, put um, secularism, uh, laicity, in many of the laws, when it came to family laws, then they allowed Islam to rule. And they, uh, they, and they allowed Muslim courts to take care of uh, inheritance, marriage, divorce. So we are this, we are, even if we were a secular state, it was a dual system in which, for example, I was married in 1971 uh, on the Wall of Islamize, Islamized Muslim uh, uh, custom, while other people were married under the Code Napoleon. So that's what I mean when we say about, uh, when we talk about secularism, about laicity. But what was important is that laicity was a basic principle. A principle that, a principle that people uh, accepted, because um, in the Constitution, in the Penal Code, in many of the laws that are ruling the country, religion is nowhere except in the Family Code, and that that was problematic. So the two cases I uh, I wanted to discuss about, but I uh, don't have at the time were Senegal and, uh, and Mali. And those two countries, which were former French colonies, became independent in um, 1960, are the three months joint venture of a uh, federal country. Got split three months later in, 90, in 1960. But both of those countries have a constitution in which it is written that uh, laicity is one of the basic principle. And that basic principle for, for three to four decades, people tried to, uh, to deal with it. It was, it was sort of a very complex system, but at least we knew that uh, secularism was there. And, but with the revival of, uh, uh, of Islamic discourses, uh, I don't know if say worldwide, but in many countries that we are uh, concerned, uh, concerned with, then the resistance that people had and trying to have a secular state uh, started to be uh, fragmented and trying to be uh, politically subversive into the, 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 the principle of, uh, of, uh, of laicity. And I think that for the, uh, the uh, 21st year that where we are at Sangor, who was Christian as the president, were able to have a family code in which Islam was one of the source of, uh, of the law, but at least people could discuss about uh, a laic a system which was uh, laic, which was very difficult in Mali because they were unable to, uh, to construct a family code being a laic one, so they had something which was made of uh, several little uh, laws, and they, and they, uh, but they still uh, had to make it more prog progressive. And when Mali did it in 2009, when the country was independent since 1960 and had sort of family law in 1962, uh, the family law that, that, uh, that put in many international conventions that we had for 30 years of uh, women's uh, fight for, for their rights, 
uh, became totally jeopardized by Muslim organization. And just one point that I wanted to say in, uh, on, on Mali, and then we can discuss maybe later about it. Mali has been in war, in civil war. The war that we had in Mali, but that we call a terrorist war, uh, because it is a terrorist war. But in the same time, I think it's very important to understand the historical background. With colonization, people from different uh, backgrounds were put together as one state. And people of the north of, uh, of Mali and people in the southern part of uh, that uh, Sahara Desert were people from different uh, ethnic groups that the family would say, okay, that's from different uh, tribes. And then they say the north is white and the south is, um, is black. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen uh, someone from northern from the north Mali. They wouldn't be black if they were running in the streets of uh, of, they wouldn't be white if they were running in the street of New York or in the street of, uh, of London. But race was used. But in fact, it was a political struggle. It was, let's say, maybe a nationalist struggle. But what happened? It happened at a place where uh, it, region was used as a political tool. So because what, let's say, nationalists in other parts of the country used in order to get to split the country into two was we want uh, Sharia, because the way that they use, to be the basic law of, uh, of the country. As Asnaja showed that in Tunisia, where they talk about we are uh, a Muslim country, we need, uh, we need the, the law of God run the country. It was something that was, which was something that very important in understanding what happened in, uh, in Mali. And it was a real a backlash. Uh, against the uh, against the city. Thank you.